So something that we want to cover is a question that I get a lot, you know, what are the rules around trading? Why do I need to true? I have a chronograph. I'm using a custom drag model. So why would I ever need to true? And why, if, if I'm using a chronograph and a custom drag model, why would it not hit where it's predicting? So what's some of the potential problems and how does truing fix this? So let's, let's kind of get back and go to over the history of truing and kind of come up with uh, an answer to these, these, problems or not really problems, but the questions of when do I need to true and why do I need to true? And even if I'm using a chronograph or a custom drag model. So way back in the day, uh, using different ballistic engines, I would have to build maybe three different guns for the same gun to, to make the system work at different ranges. So one of the things that I came up with was, you know, basically A plus B plus C equals D. D was your impact, right? C is your density altitude. B is your BC. The unknown is your muzzle velocity. Well, people, uh, most of the time people agree that they think they know the DC of the bullet. We can get into that later and talk about that. We know the density altitude. We know the impact. So if you have good resolution and you're doing it at the right range, and this is what we need to talk about. If you have good resolution at the right range of Mach 1.2 or within 10% of that, that gives us a definite good uh, measurement to actually be able to predict closer in. Density altitude is a known, BC is a known, all we need to know what the muzzle velocity is. And so guys go, well, what if I have a chronograph and I get a chronograph read? I know my muzzle velocity. Why is it not predicting correctly? Well, unfortunately, different chronographs, we've used different chronographs, uh, or actually the same chronograph, and use two of them, and it give us within 35 feet per second, but it's not good enough resolution to actually have a good prediction. And so it's not that chronographs are bad. There's a lot of good, you know, a lot of good calibrated chronographs out there. And then they go, well, I've got a, I got a good muzzle velocity and I'm using a custom drag model now. And why would my prediction be off? Well, it could be that your barrel is destroying BC. So we've done a test, 13 military rifles, and 12 of them gave us the same 0.533 uh, BC in a G1. And one of them can even make 0.5. All right, so why wouldn't we true the BC? Well, when you true the BC, now you're moving out of a custom drag model math that's made for that bullet. And you're moving into a world that you're now using a G1 or a G7. Well, that is fine in supersonic, it's gonna predict it really well, but once you get into subsonic, that prediction's off. So you would have to skew it at that time. And we, we would, we would take a DSF and skew the prediction and, and make it match up where the bullet actually hit, connecting the dots with the G1 or G7. But now you're using math that's not actually made for the bullet. So with a uh, custom drag model, we would actually take and use that. It's gonna give us a better prediction there may be a point that if I go out there and true my muzzle velocity, it may not give me a exact prediction in subsonic. Heck, you can take a, a chronograph and a custom drag model and you may not hit exactly where it predicts. Uh, there's a lot of little variables come into play, but what you can do is, you know, we always believe that a good chronograph and a custom drag model is gonna give us a perfect prediction. If it doesn't match up perfectly, instantly you treat your weapon system, changing your muzzle velocity inside supersonic. And then once you go beyond 0.9 Mach, instantly then we'd go ahead and do a DSF and everything would be perfect. All right, so it's just connecting the actual dots of where the actual flight path of the bullet is. And that's what we're doing. We're actually listening to the bullet and letting it correct everything. So a lot of the little slot variables are, you know, so a lot of times are variables that we didn't control or we didn't take care of headwinds, tailwinds effect, uh, direction of fire. Once you start, start talking about the time of flight, shooting into uh, DSF ranges, you know, Mach 0.9 and, and farther out. So this is something that, you know, we set the rules. You'd never true at 400 meters and in. It's too close. We don't have good resolution of velocity. This isn't proper. You'd always want to be at supersonic or just inside supersonic for truing your muzzle velocity. If you're you know, I have guys ask me questions all the time, like, hey, can I true just a little bit past, you know, Mach 1.2? And the answer is really yes, you can, if you know your bullet's gonna maintain stability. If your bullet goes to transonic and because you're not spinning your bullet fast enough, it starts dropping off. Now, when it hits a little lower than prediction, your truing's gonna say, well, you've got a slower muzzle velocity. In reality, it wasn't, but the, the bullet's losing stability and dropping off the prediction. And what's, what's going to happen is now your velocity was higher and it's going to have a higher impact uh, when you're actually shooting at closer ranges. And so if you shot 
pre-trans and then went out farther and you hit, you know you're stable. So the next time you want to go out and shoot the same bullet with a different lot and you shoot, if you're a little bit past, that's fine. But we set this rule for a reason that you want to be at Mach 1.2 or closer when you're doing muzzle velocity, Mach 0.9 or farther when you're doing your subsonic algorithm. So these are the reasons the rules are set the way that they are. And me and Brian Litz agree 100%. If you're using a chronograph and a custom drag model, everything should marry up. And if for some reason something is slightly off, immediately true your muzzle velocity and it gives you the same resolution in prediction or same uh, hit probability as you go in and out uh, inside of supersonic and beyond. Uh, because truing basically will give you the exact same muzzle velocity as a good chronograph if you do it properly. So this is, we're not saying one's really better than the other, they're both going to give you the same information if you do it right. So this is kind of the rules around truing and how to manage truing when things don't work out perfectly if you're using a chronograph. And per we don't use a chronograph in class because there's rules of truing that we need to teach. Chronographs are easy. You set it up, use a custom drag model with a good zero, we should be dead on. And if there is any adjustment to make it, you make it quick and move on. Uh, and the prediction should carry forward after that point. But uh, this is the reason that we teach truing and that we came up with truing. And we still currently, even with the custom drag models and really good chronos that we have today, we still utilize truing because in the field, I may not have the opportunity to grab a chrono, but I can always true within a couple of bullets and have the same uh, capability as a qualified prediction of where my bullet's going as a good chrono would give me.